Hey guys, welcome back to Layout. This is Dan here as always, and in this how-to video, I'm going to be showing you something you guys have wanted to see for a while. That's right, we're going to cover decaling a locomotive. In this video, we're going to be working with this Merck Sealand Atherin RTR SD40-2, and we're going to be doing some renumbering. Now, this is something a lot of you, like I said, have asked me about, and with decaling, it's very, very simple. And a lot of people, I see a lot of people, like, even newcomers to the hobby, who, you know, are interested in getting started and like custom painting some equipment obviously we understand like not every road is created available in mass production like say Union Pacific mass production compared to a little short line a little private road or even someone that's creating their own little private home base little layout excuse me just for their home road or something like that that's where it gets hard and that's where custom painting comes in and the issue is even if you can get decals made, I see a lot of people, uh, when it comes to decaling, shy away from it because they think it's too hard or they simply don't think they have enough skill or they don't think they have what it takes to be able to do that. And what I'll say right now, decaling is very, very simple. And with a few basic techniques, anyone can do it. And I mean anyone. It's very, very easy. And I'm, in this little video, I'm going to try to show you just the simple ways I decal. And there's no magic, no real magic to it. It's just simple, simple sticking decals in water basically and then gluing them on and I'll cover a few little things on how I do give you little tips here and there to show you how I do this so without anything else to really talk about there um, we'll just go ahead and get right into this alright so getting started what we have here is a Merc Sealand SD40-2 uh, this is a one of a kind unit that NS did they painted for Merc Sealand and um, Little little side note on this unit, this used to come by my house often back in the early 2000s when it was based in Foster Royal Ohio, so I actually saw this on local service. So I actually, um, I think I have some pictures of it somewhere, but I'd have to look through my archives again. But just a little fun tip there. Um, but getting back to the project, what we have again is a brand new Atherin RTR model that was sent to me by a customer uh, who's actually a good friend of mine. And what he wanted me to do with this is renumber it. So recently I was, I finally got a decal sheet. I found the right decal sheet I could use to model one of the X Conrail units with the number series and that particular font that they use for these units. So um, I guess it's good timing, and like I said, what I'll be doing here is just a simple renumbering project to kind of give you an idea. Basically, this is a simple way to do, this is a pretty simple process, this, this one is. But it, the same, basically the same techniques and such apply when it comes to even applying full, like, hood decals, like say a Merc Sealand logo or any of these other logos, it really really it's the same thing you're doing the same thing now yes when it comes to like say when you're working on the hoods of diesels for example and don't worry I won't talk for like two hours but this is just a basic example to try to get a little thing out of the way here um, say you're doing a logo like this now compared to say applying decals on a smooth flat surface like on the side of the cab here for example a simple project like that just simple renumbering of the number boards or anything like that that's simple that's easy to do it that's very very basic and it's very very simple now when you get into something like say applying the like say an emblem on the side of the hoods or applying the logos to the sides of an engine like on the hood like for example with this one where you got all the doors and everything and all these panels in the way this is where it gets a little more tricky and the key with this is again I'll just say basically when you do something like this for one thing you want to keep your work your area wet and you want to have plenty of q-tips as you'll see I'll show you a few things and I'll keep kinda of going back to this to kinda of give you an example but with this you want to treat this with a little more care obviously so if you get into something like this keep that in mind and as I go along I'll try to explain to you a little more how this will work uh, it'll kinda of try to I'll try to kinda of make it'll, it'll kinda of try to make more sense as the video goes along so you'll, you'll kinda of see but uh that's just a little side note there um, but what we're covering here is really a basic decal project I, and I've done this many times before it's just a simple renumbering so again what we have is the stock atherin unit and the first thing I like to do obviously I'll bring it a little closer kinda towards the of, edge of my bench and what I like to do is take like a pair of pliers like this and set them down like that and then I can flip the engine over like this and that way you're working on a uh, basically it's directly straight flat on its side where you can get in there and work and no problems so that's what I like to do when I really when I decal 
So that's the first thing. Now, when it actually comes to the decal process, um, there's a few materials that I'll be using, and I'll go ahead and show you. So coming down to actually the materials you'll need when decaling, obviously the first thing you'll need is the decal sheet itself. When you're trying to find a, or when you're trying to do a particular unit, say an NS unit, for example, like I'm doing, what you want to do is try to do research on the thing and try to figure out what you're going to need. And with a little research, I was able to find the correct decal sheet, like right here, for example. This is an actual decal sheet for X Conrail units for patching and such and this is exactly what I need right here so you want to try to get a decal sheet that's going to closely match what you're looking for so that's the first thing obviously is the decals now the next thing you'll need is a bowl of hot water or warm water either way I like to use kind of a mixture between hot and warm water it's pretty pretty warm right now but I like to use that. Warm water helps decals kind of loosen up quicker and I think it works better, say for example, than putting them in cold water. It works better if you have like lukewarm water, warm water. Hot water you don't necessarily have to. It's not like you have to burn yourself, but just as long as it's like say warm water for example, I think it helps the decals um, kind of loosen a little better actually. And I've had better results with using warm water for decaling anyways. So that's another thing you'll need is warm water. And now when it comes to actually applying the decals and putting them in place so that they won't come off, I use a Micromark decal finishing set. This stuff is really good for decals. I really love it. Um, what this set contains is five individual um, half ounce bottles of products. For example, you have your decal setting solution, your decal softening solution, clear gloss, clear satin, and clear flat. And all of these can be used whatever results you're trying to get. If you're trying to go for a flat finish, if you're trying to go for a gloss finish, if you're trying to go for a kind of a clear flat finish, anything like that, uh, it works really well. So the products I use out of the out of the box, basically what I use, I'll go ahead and show you, is my clear gloss finish. and my solvent solution. These are my two favorites to use uh, out of the package for decaling. These are my favorite products. But when it comes to decaling, I mean, there's a lot of different brands and companies that make decal setting solutions and such, and it's really your, your personal preference there when it comes to this. For me, Micromark is the best choice for me, and I've had great results. Originally, I was using the Microsol brand, um, and that worked pretty well. The Microsol and Microset uh, decal finishing set for microscale and those worked pretty well and I was happy with the results on those too but I ended up finding that these worked better for me so again it's really just a, a matter of preference what works well for you. you you kind of you know whichever I mean Walters makes a good solve set solution too I mean Walters makes them I think I mean obviously uh, microscale makes some micromark makes some so you know <laughs> there's all kinds of finishing uh, solutions and stuff like that for decaling so it's really based on your preference and you gotta just kinda try to experiment and find what works well for you so and this is what works well for me and this is what I'll be using so with all that being said we have our basic materials set out and we'll go ahead and get started on the actual decaling process so the first thing you'll need to do when actually getting the decals off the sheet here for example is what you're gonna wanna do is have a brand new sharp hobby knife blade in this case I'm using a number two exacto this is my favorite for decaling obviously and it has a brand new blade and what you do is you pick the numbers and the decals that you want and the idea is you want to get as close as possible to the decal that you're numbering to eliminate as much of the decal film or any excess decal film as possible so what I'm going to do is since I'm um, modeling a unit with the number 30 with the in the 3320 series um, I'm just going to go ahead and use these up here, as you can see, that are already put together. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take and I'm going to cut them out as close as possible to the numbers without actually cutting into the numbers, obviously. And once you get it out of the decal sheet, what you can do is then you can take and clean up the Oops, sorry about that. What you can do next is take it and you can clean up the edges a little bit, which is what I'm going to do here. Uh, I won't show you that process, but that's just basically what you do. And when you do this, you just want to cut the decals out as close as you can to the edges of the numbers and everything to eliminate any excess decal film, uh, since you don't really want too much of that showing, obviously. 
Um, but that's basically it. So what I'll do now is cut out an 8 for this. And then we'll go ahead and put it in the water and apply it to the model. So the next thing you do, once you get the decals cut out, is you just simply transfer them to the water like that and let them soak for a few minutes until they're loose. And this usually takes about, in this case, uh, about a minute. Uh, with warm water, obviously, it speeds up the process, so it won't take that long. So you just let it sit for a second, and then you prep your work area and get the locomotive ready to go. Uh, so you can just simply move on and then apply the decals as soon as they're ready to go. Alright, so here you can see we have the area prepped and ready to go. Now, what I had to do with this unit, because this is a special project and this is a one-of-a-kind unit, right out of the box this comes number 3329 just like the real thing, but the customer wanted me to renumber this to 3328. So what I did was I completely stripped off the old lettering and then gloss coated the engine so that the... You want to obviously have... that's another thing, um, just to mention real quick. When you're doing decaling, you want to have a nice glossy surface. So if you're going to do some decaling, usually what you want to do after you apply the paint coat or anything like that, what you want to do is apply a gloss coat. One or two gloss coats is usually good enough. Any more than that, that's unnecessary. But um, you want to have a nice, smooth, glossy surface uh, with no imperfections if you can, if you can try to try a clean working area, obviously, um, to apply the decals to. They'll stick better and they'll they won't wear off either. Um, if you don't gloss coat it, what can happen is the decals will just go on a flat, kind of a smooth surface, and they won't really be able to stick very well, and over time they'll actually peel off. So you want to have a nice, smooth, glossy surface that they can have a good bond and contact to. So with that being said, like I said, I went ahead and did that. I applied a gloss coat to the engine, and now this little area is ready. So our decals are ready to go here, and I have them right off the decal sheet, and I'm pulling them out of the water now. And what I do is I take my hobby knife and then I put it underneath the decal film of the decal that I'm going to, going to apply I take it and then I put it on the side of the unit like this now I'll take my 8 and do the same There's a little bit of dirt in there, which we'll remove real quick. We'll go ahead and start moving them kind of into the rough position where they're going to be, kind of like this. Now once you kind of get them into their rough position like that, what you do then is you take a Q-tip and what you do is you roll it over the decal kind of like this to try to get rid of some of the excess water any air bubbles any loose particles anything like that you want to try to remove right away otherwise it'll cause some problems and that one kind of moved a little bit so I'm going to take a little water wet it up again Move it back into its position. And I'm just checking it right now from the side to make sure everything is level and even. Which I think the A can go up just a little bit. Not too much though. So that's looking pretty good. Again, I'll check the sides to make sure they're all even and squared up. I'll check the bottom of the cab to make sure that the numbers look okay, which they do. So right there is basically where I want the decal to be, as you can see. That looks pretty good right there. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. And now what you do is we'll come in with the Q-tip again very, very carefully. And then you just squeegee it like this and roll out all that extra excess moisture. just like that. Alright, so the decal's in place. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take my decal solvent solution and basically what this is going to do is it'll start to kind of snug up the decals. Take a little bit. A little piece of fuzz there for some reason. And then what you do so you just take a little bit 
and you go over the surface of the decal and around the edges. Obviously you don't want to just spread this all over the place, just in the areas that the decal is going to be sitting. And as you can see the one moves, but that's alright, we'll just slide it back in place. You kind of have to expect that that's going to happen when you're using that. And again on a smooth surface like this it's kind of bound to happen so you kind of got to be prepared. And when that does happen you just quickly respond and move the decal back into its position. So again, I'm going to make sure everything's lined up, which it is, as you can see. And now what we'll do, now the decal's in place and it's not going anywhere, what we're going to do is let this sit for a few seconds. And at this point in time, you can actually move on to other areas of the engine. Say, for example, if you're doing a full decal job while this sets, you can move on to another area. Like, say, for example, if you custom painted this, while that's setting, you could apply these little decals here or do this decal here while that sets. So that's, a, that's another thing. Um, what I'll go ahead and do now is actually move on to the rear number boards. Um, and I'll save the front number boards for, so I can actually show you guys how that's done. But for now I'm just going to let this sit for a few seconds and then we'll come back and then apply the uh, clear gloss. Alright, so the decal setting solution is uh, set and the decal isn't going anywhere as you can see. It's nice and flat and even and smooth. And what we'll go ahead and do now is apply the gloss finish to the top of it. Now with this stuff, you just want to take a nice little bit out of the container and then kind of try to smooth off the excess. And then you take your brush and then transfer it to the model. And again, you want to try to keep it on the border of the decals, kind of in that area. And don't apply too heavy of a a surface. If you have to apply a second coat, you can. Just don't put a big dab over the decals. That's the big mistake because what you can actually do is put this big, uh, basically it'll look like a big bump over the decals and all you're doing is creating a rough surface and it looks very unrealistic so try to avoid that. And you just apply uh, thin soft coats at a time. I'll clean up that little bit there. That's plenty. I'll go ahead and apply this to my other areas that I've already decaled and we'll move on to another area. But basically it's that simple. Uh, nothing really to it and like I said once you do all this just let it dry and set it up. So we'll go ahead and come back here in a few minutes and start on another area. Alright, so now on to the number boards here. We're going to be working on the front ones. I've already done the back to save time. Um, the numbers on the sides are all in place. I went ahead and did this number board to save time. And what we're going to be working on is this number board on the fireman side of the engine here. Now, there, again, there's nothing really to it. Obviously, this is another thing where a lot of people can get scared because the smaller the decal is, a lot more times it'll be a little more fragile and you have to take a little bit more care than, say, a larger decal, anything like that. But again, it's still very, very simple, and you just take your time is the key. Patience is key with this. You just got to go real nice and slow and just take your time and make sure you do things right the first time. So what I have so far, I have my decals in the water, and I have these already cut out. And the nice thing with the NS decal sheet here is that most of these numbers already come in groups, so I can already just simply apply the 33 and a set together like this. And again, I just took it soaked it in water for a few seconds and then I took my hobby knife and basically took the decal off the, uh, the backing paper and just simply applied it right to the model like that. Now the 28 again is the, basically the same thing so it's uh, grouped together nicely which definitely helps to save time. Now sometimes you won't get that lucky sometimes you'll actually have to cut out each individual number out of the sheet and when you do that you have to obviously take a little bit more extreme care to make sure everything is aligned properly and everything like this so that's another that's just something to keep in mind but it's nice when you can get a little break like this and have these numbers grouped together like this it definitely saves a little bit more time so now that we got them in place we'll go ahead and get them in their rough position like this as you can see the three is drying out that's why it's starting to do that so what we're going to do is I'm going to take some water and kind of put it over so we can keep working this in place. It's a little too much water but that's alright. Just dab it up with the q-tip and then continue to work the decal into its final position. And by the way guys I'm using a hobby knife obviously to do this. Um, you don't have to use a hobby knife you can use um, you can use toothpicks, you can use other little tools like that um, you can use a hobby knife. Obviously, there is the risk of 
um, cutting the decal or damaging the surrounding areas but because I've just had so much experience using hobby knives with decals I've kind of gotten used to how it works and I can usually do it pretty well without damaging anything so I haven't had any real any real problems with using a hobby knife to do this it works for me so whatever works for you in that case just as long as it does the job and everything and just like that the 3328 is in place as you can see so what we're gonna do is we'll go ahead take our brush again I'm actually gonna take the q-tip first though and just touch it over the areas like that to make sure the decal is actually in place and now we'll take our decal solvent solution and just with a little little subtle amount of decal solution we'll put it over the numbers like this remember not to flood the area either when you're applying the fluid to, um, to seal up the decal I'd never flood it like that either. Just a very, very small amount is all you need. And again, that one kind of slipped a little bit, so we'll move it up a bit. Just like that, that'll work. So there we go. Now we'll let that set for a few seconds, and then we'll come back over and apply the gloss to both of these. And now we'll just go ahead and apply the gloss finish to both of these number boards try to do this so it's not in the way. It's kind of hard with the camera in your way, but you get... I'm just trying to do this carefully, obviously. And then we'll let that dry for a little bit. And we'll come back. And while that sets, here's your bro tip of the day, fellas. When you're using the two together, remember to clean your brush between each of these. You don't want to, say, use your decal solvent solution first, apply it to the model, and then once that's dry, just instantly stick it into the clear gloss. You don't want to mix the two like that. What you do between applications of the different products, what you want to do is take your brush and you want to dip it in your water over here. You want to clean your brush off, then get rid of all the excess residue from the original product or the material or the, uh, the fluid, and then dry it off and then transfer it to the clear gloss. Use that, apply it, and then clean off your brush again. Like I said, you don't want to mix the two together and you also you don't want your brush drying out either. So that's just your broke tip of the day. Okay, so at this point all the decaling is done and what I'm going to do next is do a gloss finish on the entire model and get it ready for the next process too, which is weathering, which I won't show in this video obviously. The point is the decaling, but this is an important step so you can seal up all your decal work and make sure that it's not going to peel off or anything. So I'm just going to simply use some uh, testers gloss coat and apply about one or two coats uh, for the locomotive and uh, we'll go ahead and get started. And just like that, NS3328 is completed, the gloss coat is applied, and the weathering is complete. So at this point in time, the unit is pretty well ready to be uh, put back in the box and sent back to its owner. I hope this video was helpful to you. I hope this kind of basically showed you the, the fundamentals of decal apl application. And again, you know, it's relatively simple, and it's just one of those things you got to get out and experiment with and practice. That's what I had to do when I was first learning it. I ended up actually starting with dry transfers, and then I worked my way into water slide decals. But, I mean, it's very, very easy to do, and again, anybody can do it, and what I encourage, I just encourage you to go out and just practice. There's no right and wrong way to do it. You can even just take a, if you really wanted to, an old, like, scrap box car or something like that, and just practice on that, if you really wanted to. There's no rule in the book saying that you have to go out and get an engine and then try right away for your first time. There's always the option to experiment. So, I hope this video was encouraging to you guys and helpful, and I hope that you learned a few things. Again, if you have any questions, anything like that, uh, please feel free to contact me. Uh, also, be sure to check out my Facebook group, uh, Dance Custom Trains, Daniel Arnold, on Facebook. And in the meantime, um, I hope you enjoyed this video, and take care.